Okay, welcome to the third video uh, from England's remote coaching. Uh, this is the, the third of six videos that will be released, one each week on a, a Monday afternoon. Uh, I'd just like to introduce you to Richard Dennigan. Richard Dennigan is the, the head coach of the City of Leeds uh, Council Run Scheme. So straight into this, um, Rich, just in terms of how you're, you're remote coaching, I just want to ask you what social uh, media platforms and ways of communicating with your athletes, your coaches and your parents are you using? Okay, so, um, morning Rich. Um, the, the, the first thing is via email. Um, the, this, what we're trying to what we're trying to do with with our older swimmers is um, be a little bit more descriptive with what we're doing, um, as we would do in our normal training environment. So um, they will have their own individual plans um, because obviously that are they because they have been in the program a lot a lot longer and probably been exposed to a bit more technical work in terms of strength and conditioning and land training. Um, we, we've been able to be a bit more individualised and prescriptive with what they do. Um, and we've just tried to keep that to um, the weekly programme that they would do in the, in the swimming pool. So in terms of intensity, um, emphasis, um, amount of time at task in terms of time, time they're doing one repetition for, etc., so all those all those plans have gone direct to them via email. Um, the second uh, social media platform has been fa our Facebook page, the Swimming Club's Facebook page, uh, where we've just put um, more. Um, I would say I wouldn't say easier exercises, but 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 just more good fundamental exercises on there, so that um, the younger swimmers and parents. Can can engage with that properly with some technical coaching points on on each of the exercises as well, um, and that's been going on every day um, and on our Instagram account as well that one of the coaches uh, uses, um, and then also the, the the Twitter. So whatever we put on Facebook, we put on our Twitter page as well. That's brilliant, and and we've. With that as well, Rich, what staff have you been able to utilise to be able to deliver your strength and conditioning? And maybe on top of that, if you didn't have some of those staff, what route would you have taken in terms of delivery? Yeah, okay. So, um, in, the, in the first instance, when we first shut down, um, Leeds City Council were, were quite proactive in the strategy of social distancing. So we were probably ahead of we were ahead of most places in terms of um, not swimming, if you like, because of what was going on. Um, so in, in the first few days, we, we we just let everybody sit and just take everything in, and then towards the end of the week, I started um, I started asking people to come and uh, put things together. The first instance, I wanted to put some kind of technical points on on the on social media platforms and um, they could practice in the mirror i mean even now i still practice in the mirror just to make sure i'm, I'm doing the right things uh, when i'm demonstrating um so um myself and kevin schofield one of our coaches um met up and we did some technical technical coaching points on on kicking drills and swim drills um just so that um, we had some real specific, clear coaching points moving forwards into our strategy of, of uh, engaging with the with the whole membership. Um, so Kevin is full time. Um, he's he's on a, he's not on a full time contract, but he's got full time hours. Um, so Kev was willing to come in and, and uh, help us out. Uh, Craig Robertson, one of our other um, basically full-time coaches. Craig works with Swim England himself with, with the sports science side with Diane. Um, so Craig has been able to uh, help us out with videos um, and, and be quite um, 
prescriptive with the videos in terms of putting coaching points on and stuff. Um, Alex Parry and Tim Jarrett. Tim also works with Swim England with the strength and condition side with Dai. Um, they between those two, they've put prescriptive programs together. Um, so the videos that go out on the um, the Facebook pages, etc., Alex has done. So Alex and Craig work together to make sure that it, it's clear on what we want people to do, and any coaching instruction is clear on those videos as well. And then Tim deals with uh, the more prescriptive side of our our uh, older swimmers. Um, so, yeah, then obviously James, James and Callum then um, work between each other, putting things on Facebook, etc., and and, uh, and engaging with the with the membership. Yeah, that's brilliant. So you've got a lot of resources um, at your disposal there, Rich. Just in terms of, let's say you were at a club that didn't have some of those resources. What do you think your your steer on it would have been, you know, without people like Tim and Craig and Kevin? What do you think your your, your tax would have been in terms of being able to still deliver to your athletes? I think I think it would be as simple as doing it yourself. Um, you know, Ke Kevin Kevin Schofield, that one of our coaches, he, he's he's a fairly fit young lad, um, so he he would be more than willing to do stuff. I would do stuff myself. It might not look pretty rich, but I would do it just so that I'm engaging with the uh, with the membership and giving giving some of the younger ones in particular something to do. Um, you know, I think some of the other coaches would have been willing to engage as well with stuff like that. Um, so I think it would just been a task of who's comfortable getting on um, on a video and. Um, just describing what you want to do. As I say, it might not look pretty, but um, it's just about, I think the engagement is, is important. Just in terms of safeguarding, um, have you put any safeguarding measures in from, from remote coaching um, around delivery of strength and conditioning or some of the social media you're using? Yeah. Well, all, all we've done is um, obviously the the paid professionals are doing it. Um, in terms of the videos, that obviously the technical points that we want to achieve um, for good for good exercise technique is on the videos as well. And it's there's a there's a range of repetitions that should go on. So there's a there's an upper age that you should be able to achieve, and then there's a the, there's a lower age group rep repetitions as well. Just so that um, obviously there's two groups where you can we're not stressing too much the younger ones and we're challenging the old ones as much as the younger ones are. So um, it's just just that balance of, of trying to engage with everybody so that they've um, got the right amount of work to do, rather than just um, everybody do the same thing. That's brilliant. And then I've noticed there's been a fair few videos from some of your models from us come out. Um, I really like those. Can you just tell us how they've come about and what, what kind of communication you had with those athletes? So, yeah, I mean, well, first of all, we're just trying, trying, I'm trying to touch base with all the swimmers once a week in, in smaller groups. Um, we We've done it via Skype so far, but we're going to try Zoom today. So that that'll probably end in a disaster because I'm not very good at stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, the, with the older guys, we've just asked them to give an account of what they've been up to, how they've been feeling, um, because obviously everybody more often than not are going to have the same kind of thought process of what's going on. Um, some are going to have good days, some are going to have bad days, some are going to be bored, some are going to be doing lots of skill work, some are going to be not motivated, some are, some people are going to be motivated, you know, you, you're just going to be on a an up and down cycle really. Um, so I just wanted to um, let everybody know that everybody's in the same boat and we're all in it together and, you know, the, the swimmers that swimming at the high level like you know we're trying to go on to the olympic team or 
whatever team they were trying to get onto or whatever performance they were trying to achieve, it's it's the same whether you're nine years old or whether you're whether you're nineteen, twenty years old in the you know, it's each day is gonna be different, each day is gonna be good, each day is gonna be bad, you know, it's 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 just the collective um a collective bunch of emotions really isn't it that you go through and I just wanted everybody to understand that the older swimmers are going through the same as the younger swimmers are and and I just think the level of engagement from the older swimmers and the younger swimmers is is good um because they they might not always see the older swimmers um some some of the younger swimmers might not know the older swimmers and that's and that's fine because obviously they train at different times and maybe different pools but it's it's good that the level of engagement between the the older swimmers is 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 there for the rest of the program to see. Um, you know what? You know I, I remember I remember when I was younger looking up to the older swimmers and and uh, really hanging on every word they said to me. Um, so yeah, it's just just as simple as that, Rich. Just the level of engagement and everybody's in the same boat. Um, everyone has good days, everyone has bad days, and um, it's just trying to keep up open lines of communication with everybody. That's brilliant. Thanks, Rich. And then I've just got two more questions, really. What does what does your next week look like for your athletes? Uh, you've already alluded to it a fair bit that you've kept your your weekly cycling terms of land training the same as, it, as you normally would, um, as if you were swimming. But what does what does that look like on each particular day? Um, just give us an example of what your youth athletes will be doing. Yeah. So the so what just 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 to be clear, the land training is now following. It's not tra It's we're not following the normal land training program that we would do outside of the pool. We're following what they would do in the pool. So Monday AM, for example, is is more descending work just to get the body working again after the the weekend off so it say say you're doing for argument say 10 400s descend one to five six to ten for example on freestyle the the exercise the circuit would reflect that so you might have a bunch of exercises say that you you would it would take say five minutes to do and you might go um on reducing rest for example so you might do it in seven minutes on round one six and a half minutes in round two six minutes round three exceptions so that it, it reflects a descending set on uh, a swim set and that and and the emphasis all week on the land training program it is is the same so if you if we're doing 100 meter uh, race specific sets um, and you might do a 25, a 25 and a 50, for example. You, we would do an exercise where it lasts for about 13 to 15 seconds, repeat that exercise, and then we would do a, an exercise that you would be doing for, say, 30 seconds. And then you, you'd have a rest, and then you would repeat um, that four, five, six, seven, eight times, whatever you want to do, do it for. Um, but it has to... Re We've tried to reflect um, things like muscle power, muscle strength in there. So obviously, if you're swimming steady, the, the amount of power that you're going to apply is, is going to be less than you would be if you're doing a 100-meter set. So, you know, it might be a little bit of a, a plyometric type exercise into something else that would reflect um, the, the power that you would be wanting to put into the swim. Uh, and that's reflective of of the whole week, really. So, you know, if if you do nine sessions, if you're doing well, everyone should be doing nine workouts a week now. Um, so we just follow the swim pattern: two Monday, one Tuesday, two Wednesday, one Thursday, two Friday, one Saturday. Um, so we're just trying to follow the same same routine um, as if we were in the pool. I think Tim Tim says it to me. It was it's around thirteen hours of land training. Um, over the week, if they're doing it all, so um, could this forthcoming week we've sent out uh, a plan, and it's just basically the same, but you do it for a little bit longer, 
or you do it um, a little bit harder maybe you know it might be it might be you do the same amount of rounds but it might be that you um, you, you do it for a longer period so instead of a two minute circuit it might be a two and a half minute circuit but you still do it six times yep. um, so it's 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 just the, the same, but a little bit more difficult and progressing over kind of a six week period. Brilliant. My last question kind of is born out some of the feedback that I've had from coaches over the last week on, on the impact the, that their engagement, communication, creating community um, remotely has had. What, what feedback have you had from, from your parents, from your swimmers in terms of the impact? In this difficult time, uh, I think this. I mean, we haven't. We haven't. I personally, to my email, I haven't had a lot of e emails from parents in my group. One or two have said, "Oh, thanks for engaging with us, etc." Um, and setting up these meetings. Um, on the Facebook page, there's been quite a lot of activity. Um, the younger parents saying how good it is that what we what we're doing um and it kind of inspires the kids to to get on with something and keep focused um i think the the the, the best way i the west the best way i kind of think about it is that the engagement has been quite good more than i expected on facebook i don't know what it's like on twitter but um the uh, the facebook page has had a lot of reach whatever it's called the re reaching out to people and views on videos etc so um i think that's been that's been highly successful otherwise people wouldn't view it or it wouldn't reach people however that is reached i'm not quite sure on all that stuff but um the conversations i've had with with the swimmers is that you know they're glad to talk to you um, probably more so outside the pool than you are when you're inside the pool because you're making them do things that hurt. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I think it's it's been it's been positive. We've had no negative. Um, you know, all, and all we all we're doing, all we're trying to do is keep people engaged, keep people focused, give give some give people a, a focus on on their day, um, in the hope that they come back in a in a in a good conditioning. Um, good conditioning, uh, or in in good condition, basically for for the whatever time we come back in. Uh, the thing the thing that I've tried to promote, and I truly believe, is that although yes, we're not in the pool, it's actually it's actually a good thing that they're doing so much land work now because they're going to come back with different forms of fitness that they haven't had before. Um, and and that that transfer can only have a positive effect on on their swimming because you know whether it's six weeks or eight weeks you know then then they might lose a bit of water fitness but I think in terms of their mental fitness their physical fitness they're going to be using um, muscle groups that they probably don't use an awful lot and they're engaging the body in a completely different way and also engaging the mind in a completely different way because you can all condition your mind where in swim sets because you know how it feels whereas on land you don't quite know how it feels if it, it's new or you're doing a lot of, of it so it's all kind of a, a new um a new stimulus so i think personally i, I really do believe that if you if if they're engaging with the the land training program properly and it and it and it in its full entirety, I think they're going to come back better athletes, all-rounded athletes. Brilliant. I, re I really like that emphasis of coming back a better person, a better athlete, on the emphasis of the positives rather than what you might be missing out on. I think that's a really key message to get out to people. Um, I just want to say thank you for your time this morning, Rich. Um, you, you, the leads, and the. Uh, your staff are doing a brilliant job. I know that as well as people start posting to the Swim website, I know people are using the stuff that you're doing as well. So keep it up and uh, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Yeah, no problem. If, any, if anyone wants to um, 
chat or ask questions or um, just get in touch with me. Email me or give me a ring, not a problem. That's brilliant. Thank you very much.